Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is video number 5 on how to build the inventory management tool. Today we're going to be looking at how to actually create this very dynamic pay customer debt and or pay companies debt. Every single time we make a payment right here, we have it appear on the transaction uh, table automatically. So you can see the data we collect from this customer every single time they make a payment of the debt they are actually owing my company. So now to begin with, let us actually illustrate what we are actually trying to do right here. I have this highlighted to give you a sample of what you are about to do. So this is a particular customer purchased this product and actually the deal amount is 22000 but he paid nothing. Which means uh, he's going to actually pay our company uh, 22000 as a debt. Every single time he makes this payment, we want to have the debt appeared right here on the debt paid. So let's try to see what, uh, how we can actually achieve that. So when we come back to this very paid debt, so the ID number of the customer is 103. So when we hit enter, we have the whole data about the customer actually popped out, if on the location where the customer is from. So right now, what we need to do is to actually give the date we want to make the payment in just like this so now how much does the customer wants to pay the customer wants to pay just 20,000 out of 52,000 so we have 2,000 as balance you can see what we have right here so if we go back to transactional table we're gonna see that we have just 2,000 being paid and instead of 22,000 right here we have just 2,000 to be actually the balance the customer needs to balance this so now when we actually use same ID and actually make payment to the same customer using this very date so what we're going to have is for we to collect all the customers debt to thousand so right now what we have is just zero so we come back here we have the same thing under the balance we have nothing any longer so I hope this help so now to demonstrate how I did this let us come to this very uh, workbook should you've not subscribed to my channel kindly do so because we have a lot of series to come even in Dutch but we've not even started that so right now we need to actually get the customer's data which I've gotten a little bit I want to show you how I actually collected this data dynamically so by using index and match what you need to do is to come to your transactional table and click anywhere or anywhere in the table and hit on design then you need to name your table anything you feel like I've named mine tb underscore transactions you can name yours anything you like so now coming back to the pay customer that right now what we need to do is to actually use equal to and write index so now it's looking for the array the table we just named or you just named just give it any name you like i've told you sorry okay tb tb underscore transactions so when we hit comma it's asking for the raw number so we're going to be giving it a match so the match is going to be asking for a lookup the lookup is going to be this when i hit comma is looking for the lookup array so we come to this and we go to the uh, transactional id or sales id you know click on the whole column so now we give it the exact match and we close it up now the next thing is the column we want to actually pull out every single time we actually select this id what column do we want to come out the particular column we want right now we're going to be using match to determine that so we come here to actually pick the lookup which is this one page we want to be out so now we actually actually looking for the uh, lookup area as usual so we hit on this comma give us exact match when I hit close I have it, I have everything I want now we don't need to actually go through that same route again to actually have this popped out so we need to select the whole thing and copy come right here and make a paste but we're having the same thing of course we don't have to do that so we need to just change something a little bit just make a change from here so that is the header so you change it to the this header when i hit enter we have something different right now so the next thing to do is to actually this very payment we want to be dynamic every single time we make payment right here if you see this figure i have written now then subtract everything from here so we want every single time we make that uh, happen we want it to subtract something automatically from here and from the transactional table to get that right we have to come back to the transactional table 
and go to this very dot path. So let us use our sum if function. Sum if does that. So the range is going to be the ID. So the ID is going to be the range, and it's asking for criteria. So the criteria is going to be this very ID right here. So now here's comma is asking for the sum range, which is this. So now we hit close. We have some bunch of zeros just because we've not make any payment. Now let us see which of the customer uh, the customers are actually on by going to the pay customers uh, that. So we see right here we have this customer number one is actually owing us this amount of money. So this is the due amount when he purchased this quantity. So let me just take this off. Going to use comma. So when you purchase this quantity, his due amount was actually this, and we saw that his price. So he made payment of this nine thousand dollars, and he has uh, four hundred eighty-eight thousand five hundred dollars to be paid. So right now we want to just pay uh, four hundred dollars. So now what do we have? So we have eighty-eight thousand five hundred to be balanced. Automatically it subtracts itself, and when we go to transactional table. This is exactly what we have. Let us make another example. So we have this to be uh, 1.3 million. So we'll make payment of 1 million. So what do we have? You can see a million has been paid and it subtracts itself and we have it appeared here as well automatically. This is how we can actually handle paying of debt. So right now you can track with that. So every single time we make payment, we have to actually give uh, the date the payment is being made at. So now, so that you can actually track back if any problem arises. So you can track how the customer make his or her payment. And as well, if you actually own a company you purchase from, you can actually use this very way to actually keep record of the customer uh, of the company. Uh, way of you paying debt to the company. So when the company says, oh, you actually have not paid this particular debt, you just let go, I have the record. So you just go home, uh, you log into the system and give the uh, company the record. So right now, in order to actually populate this more, so you can come back to this transactional table and actually looking for a, 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 a particular customer that is on, which is this very customer uh, ID number five. And all you need to do is just to combine it this one and just type ID 5. When you hit enter, you have the whole information of the particular uh, customer to actually pull out. So enter the date and enter the amount the customer wants to pay. I hope you get the whole idea we've actually used right here. So right now, you are going to actually do this yourself by actually creating this pay company's debt on your own by using this very simple video I just illustrated to you. So if you've not subscribed to my YouTube channel before, kindly do so, like, leave a comment, ask question, and actually like our page, our Facebook page, so that you can actually keep connected every single time I drop a new video, you get to see it. If you really want to see every single time I make a video and I drop it right here on this YouTube, that little bit right there, hit it. Hit it, just destroy it, it's just for you. Like, leave a comment, and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching, I really appreciate it. Stay safe.